Welcome to another edition of That Time When. Matt Miller with you. This is the podcast series where I take you through the archive here at Trek Zone. Today we're flashing back to that time when in November 2019 I was diving into science to broaden the horizons from just Star Trek and boy we've come a long way since then. On this edition we're diving into exoplanets. Well I'm very excited to be joined by Adam Rains who is studying exoplanets. Adam, thanks so much for your time today on Trek Zone. No problem at all, thank you for having me. Tell us a little bit about your research. Uh, so I sort of work at an interesting place uh, at the intersection between like stars and planets. And so the stars and planets are formed from the same stuff. So you have a big cloud of gas and dust in space that collapses to form your stars and the planets form around them. And so it stands to reason that it, by studying the stars, you can understand the planets themselves as well. It is very cool research, and we were chatting a few weeks ago with Eloise Birchall down in Canberra, uh, who's studying the formation of planetary systems, basically the beginnings of where your research then picks up. Yeah, so I, uh, Eloise is what we call a theoretical astronomer, so she works a lot with supercomputers, and I'm an observational astronomer, so I deal with... Uh, I work with telescopes and have long nights using them, <laughs> uh, especially in the winter. But yeah, so what I do is I take uh, spectra of the stars, or as I like to say, space rainbows. <laughs> and from that, we can figure out what the stars are made of and you know how hot they are and how big they are and how that relates to any planets they might have. It is very cool research and something that's really only developed in the last couple of decades. Yeah, so I mean, we didn't actually know of any exoplanets until I think it was the 90s. Um, and since then, we've we've got now more than 4,000 around all sorts of different stars, around stars that are like the sun, around dead stars, around giant stars, uh, and planets in really weird places. Like there's a kind of planet that's, imagine Jupiter in our own solar system, but if you pushed it right up close to the sun such that its year was only, you know, a few days or a few hours. Get really hot. It's incredible and it's redefining uh, what we think a planet is really, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, so to look at our own solar system, we think, okay, all right, we've got our rocky planets really close to the sun. We've got some gas giants. We've got some ice giants and, you know, there's some stuff like Pluto. Uh, but literally this, this planet I just described, this hot Jupiter, that's literally what astronomers call them, uh, that was the first planet found around a sun-like star. And wasn't what we were expecting and it kind of turned uh theories of planet formation on its head like how did it get there did it form there migrate there what happened to the rest of the planets in the system and we've since found categories of planets that aren't even aren't like what we have in the solar system as well so there's planets that are between the size of say earth and our ice giants so uranus or neptune so somewhere in between there there's a boundary where but you go from being mostly rocky to mostly gassy and to look at our own solar system, we would have never known they existed, but those are actually really common planets. And one exoplanet that uh, Brad and I discussed a couple of weeks ago on Talk and Science uh, was the collision of two exoplanets uh, in a solar system that's a billion or a couple of billion years old, uh, sort of around the time when we, was, we were thinking that solar systems had settled down and everything was all nice and quiet uh, in, in a solar system setup. Um, but there's, there's these things, there's these exoplanets that are um, hitting each other. <laughs> yeah, it's a, the universe is a pretty wild place. I mean, to give you another example, uh, around two white dwarfs, there's a group of researchers who uh, study, like look at the spectra of white dwarfs. And these, these stars have really, or these dead stars have really pristine spectra and they're really smooth. Uh, but if you see any aberrations in them, say from heavy elements, say stuff like you know iron or rocky materials, it could be that a planet or indeed say comets have fallen into the white dwarf. And so that indicates that there's still stuff going on even long after the star itself has actually, you know, retired, so to speak. Well, at the start of the science adventure, it was very cool to have as many people beaming in as they did. Adam Rains there uh, talking about his research on exoplanets. A real thrill to be doing a lot more these days in the science and space spheres. Very, very cool. Be on the lookout for all of those sort of shows here on Trek Zone, where more than just Star Trek, we are the world's only daily science, space and sci-fi podcast network. Memberships available for $3.99 
a month, $3.99 Australian a month, of course. Uh, and that will give you behind the scenes access and all the latest goss on the latest episodes. For now, though, and as always, I'm Matt Miller for Trackzone. Keep up to date with Twitter. Catch new podcasts daily on YouTube. Plus, we're beaming to your favourite podcast app five days a week. Just search for Trekzone and subscribe.